Hi, it's Midnight Mule and I thought I'd do a short video on the coronavirus and the lockdown and the effect it's having on me as an Aspie. Uh, it's a positive effect. I'm liking it. This is all, this video is all purely from a selfish point of view, but for me, I don't have to go out now. I get to stay in the house. So I don't like going on holidays. You may have got from other videos, don't like public transport anyway, because I think it's dirty and confusing. And now I don't have to go out. And with a staycation, we've had staycations before where I'll take a week off work and then we go out for two or three days to different places. But it's better than a staycation because we don't even have to leave our property. We just stay here. And so it's great during the week. I still work. I've got the work laptop here and I connect to the VPN and work as normal and then evenings and weekends at home. So to, to know that tomorrow I get to stay in the house and then the next day I get to stay in the house, it's just brilliant. And I don't need to have other people to entertain me. All I need is something to write with. So the computer's great because I can use Excel and make up numbers. If I haven't got that, I have pen and paper, I can do things with that. And there's plenty of books in the house. You see a bookcase behind me. So yeah, it's great. Now, as for the virus itself, I'm aware some people are gonna be getting quite ill and some people are gonna die. I'm not in the high risk group, so hopefully I won't get it. But if I do get it, I shouldn't be too bad. If I do get it and it's bad, I've got a fair chance of recovering. If I die, then it doesn't affect me anyway, because then I'll be dead. Uh, so I'm not the least bit worried about the coronavirus at all. For me, it's like a nice relaxing time. I can see other people are getting stressed. We were okay with the regarding having enough food in the house. There's all this panic buying going on, but I've been watching the coronavirus since it first came out because there's all these numbers associated with it. And so from January, I was charting my own personal predictions where I thought things would be at certain dates. And for the end of Q3, I had us pushing around a million mark. This is from early February, and that's looking like where we're probably going to be. So the only downside of coronavirus for me really is possibly overstimulation. Just I get very stimulated by numbers and changing numbers and trends and this sort of things with in the real world, that is. And so with all these different numbers, all these different countries, they're collating and trying to make these predictions. That's just very exciting for me. So I just quickly show you something here, something I've been doing downstairs. This is a whiteboard downstairs. And if I just stick my head in it, there we go. So what we've got across the X axis here, I'm charting the rate of infection. So over the last five days, over the five days, how many times has the infection increased for a country and how many times has it decreased? So I originally had three columns, five and four. So if they've increased five days or four days, it's over here. This was three and two, and this was one or zero. But there were many in the three, two columns. So I decided to split this. And then going up the way we have uh, to do with the rate of death. So five and four down here means in the last five days, either five or four of the days, the rate of death has been increasing. Not the rate of death, sorry, the absolute number of deaths. The middle is three and two and up here is zero, one. So where my head is now, when a country is in this box, it means they've been going down and down with the number of, with the increase in deaths and infections. So they may well be looking to release the whole lockdown business, even possibly if they're down here somewhere, if they feel the infections are reduced. Whereas down here, where we've got Turkey and America, you don't often see them together. We've got Turkey and America, they're extremely bad. Their infection rate is going up every day on average, generally, and so is their deaths. So they're in a very bad way. So each day I've got one of my girls, Maddie, she's in the very first video, helps me, I read out the numbers, what's happening over the last five days and she moves the flags about. So normally maybe a third or a quarter of the flags move on this system day to day. But like today, they're all gradually, on average, they're either staying still or moving to the right. 
which means the infections are decreasing. I think there were two or three that went leftish. So a couple of interesting ones is South Korea here. I think I might be able to zoom in a bit. And this video is about how, how, how I'm coping with um, the, uh, the whole lockdown and things. But this is the sort of thing an aspect like me is going to do with all these numbers and stuff going on. South Korea, after China, they got hit early on and they seem to control it. And their numbers are small at the moment, but they're not controlling the infection rate very well. So that's interesting. Another interesting one is Sweden because they seem to be quite relaxed with the lockdown and their infection rate, they've kind of been doing all right. And Austria over here, they're doing the best of all the ones we're charting. We're only charting countries that have got like at least a thousand infections. China, their numbers are very, very low. And apparently the ones they're getting are from people entering the country. But uh, they're still, they could be doing better. They could be over here. Now they're relaxing things at the moment, apparently. So that might be interesting. But I'm not, as you've probably gathered, I'm not really worried about the coronavirus. I'm not scared about getting it. And I don't think it's going to have a massive impact on the world directly. What I do think is going to have a big effect and is also very stimulating is the economy. So this is a site I've been going to for the last quite a while. So the Dow Jones, for example, was way up here, managed to get up to, uh, well, 30,000 nearly, and it's plunged all the way down here. This is an incredible fall. And I'm in Britain, so the FTSE's done a similar thing, going gradually going up and then just bang. Look at commodities, crude oil. I, a few years ago, if I go back to 10 years, a few years ago, it went over the 100 mark, $100 a barrel. Now it's down to $20 a barrel is because of supply and demand. So the economy was a bubble that's been ready to burst, in my opinion, for several years. And there was going to possibly be some event that's going to make all this happen. It happened to be the coronavirus. It could have been a terrorist attack. It could have been some massive uh, earthquake or something else could have set all this off. But with a lot of people now either getting paid less or nothing at all because they've lost their job. And on top of that, of course, oil's not selling because people aren't moving as much and it's over vastly oversupply because what Saudi Arabia is doing. Um, and people are locked in and there's these stimulus packages, which means countries are pumping in a lot of extra currency into the markets. If you look at it and work it out, things like the dollar and pound euro are all gradually getting weaker. So there should be inflation, maybe even hyperinflation coming in the near future. I could be entirely wrong and it might be in two or three months, everything's back to normal. But I'm thinking we're going to have major economic troubles. A lot of people are around the world. So if I had a worry at the moment, and I don't really, but if I did, it would be to do with the economy. It wouldn't be to do with the coronavirus. And I think that's all I've got to say about that. Leave your comments below. I'd like to know if there are any Aspies watching or neurotypicals who know Aspies who are maybe finding this a very worrying time or if they're actually enjoying being locked up as well. Thank you very much. If this was interesting, like and subscribe and certainly comments are all very good. Thank you.